Hello everybody, how you doing? Uh, this is Mr. Douse. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, different ways you can classify triangles. Uh, one is by angle and the other way you can classify triangles is by their side lengths. Um, when I say by angle, I mean the angle measures inside the triangles. For example, we have the acute triangle, the right triangle, or the obtuse triangle. Every triangle in the world, in the universe, can be classified as either an acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle. Uh, but I'm also going to mention a special kind of uh, triangle, acute triangle, called the equiangular triangle. Uh, this is something you might not be familiar with, so this is something you might want to pay attention to. Now, acute triangle is very similar to acute angle. Uh, just like right triangle and right angle, and obtuse triangle and an obtuse, obtuse angle, uh, if you understand what an acute angle, a right angle, and an obtuse angle is, that's going to help you quite a bit understand uh, what I mean by these kind of triangles. Uh, now also, uh, every triangle in the world and the universe can be, can be classified uh, by sides. Uh, so we have an, a scaling triangle, the isosceles triangle, and the equilateral triangle. Uh, and so when it comes down to the big scheme of things, uh, every triangle can be classified by angle and by sides. So you can have an acute triangle that's an equilateral triangle. You can have a right triangle that's also a scaling triangle. So whenever we're classifying triangles, you're going to have if you're going to classify it by angle, it's one of these triangles. If you're going to classify it by side, it's going to be one of these triangles. If you're going to classify it using angle and sides, you can use each of these words at some point. So anyways, let's move on to classifying triangles by angle. Uh, we have an acu acute triangle. An acute triangle is a triangle where all angles measure less than 90 degrees. Uh, just like acute angle, or an angle measures less than 90 degrees, acute triangle it has all angles measured less than 90 degrees. And so I made these triangles earlier, and I, I used a protractor, and I measured all those angles. Uh, and uh, if you notice, all the angles inside this triangle are each less than 90 degrees. So that means it's going to be an acute triangle. So you've got to check every single angle, and if all angles are less than 90 degrees, then you know it's an acute triangle. Just like over here, every single one of these angles are less than 90 degrees, so this is also an example of an acute triangle. Moving on, we have the equiangular triangle. This is the special kind of acute triangle. So this is still an acute triangle here, uh, but if you look here, it says equiangular triangle. It says all angles are equal. Now, if we were to chop this word in half here, equiangular, we have equa is like equal, Angular is like angles, so equal angles. So all angles are equal. And then it mentions right here that each angle is 60 degrees. If you look at this one, this is an equiangular triangle. Uh, all these angles are 60 degrees. Uh, what are the sum of the interior angles of every triangle? Well, the sum of the interior angles of every triangle is 180 degrees. And then every triangle has three angles. So if I take 180 degrees divided by three angles of every triangle, you get each angle is going to be equal to 60 degrees. So if you ever come across a triangle that's described as being equiangular, you know that all the angles are equal. They're also always going to be equal to 60 degrees. Uh, so no matter how big or small the equiangular triangle is, the angles are always going to equal 60 degrees uh, for each one of these individual angles. Uh, so moving on, we have the right triangle. It says one angle measures exactly 90 degrees. One angle measures exactly 90 degrees. So if I'm looking around here, I see that I have one angle that is 90 degrees. This is an example of a right triangle. But oftentimes you're not going to have the number indicating what the angle is. Like this is oftentimes not going to be listed as 90 degrees. Uh, in math and geometry, you'll see more often than not a little uh, box in one of the vertices or one of the corners of the triangle. And if you see that, then you know that this is going to be a 90 degree angle. It's just kind of a way of a shorthand or simplified way of, of indicating an angle is 90 degrees. Now, if you're not quite sure if an angle is 90 degrees, like they didn't mark it and you don't have a protractor, you can tear the corner off of a piece of paper, like a notebook paper, and you can lay it over the angles. And if one of the angles is exactly the uh, angle you have on that piece of paper, that the, the corner of the piece of paper you took off, uh, then you know it's going to be a 90 degree angle. Uh, moving on, we have the obtuse triangle. It says one angle measures more than 90 degrees. So one angle measures more than 90 degrees. So I'm only looking at one angle, and if one of the angles is more than 90 degrees, I have an obtuse triangle. This is 13 degrees, this is 28 degrees. Ah, here we go. This angle is greater than 90 degrees, so this is an example of an obtuse triangle. So again, if I know one angle is more than 90 degrees, we have another example of an obtuse triangle. Now, if you're not quite sure if it's obtuse because they don't have it marked and you don't have a protractor, if you tear a corner off of the piece of paper I mentioned uh, in the previous uh, slide uh, and you were to lay it over the sides, uh, for example, if I laid a corner of a piece of paper right here, notice that this right here 
Uh, this side here goes beyond the 90 degrees, so I know this angle has to be obtuse. And if one of the angles is obtuse, then you know this has to be an obtuse triangle. Uh, I'll also oftentimes tell my students to draw a line perpendicular to uh, the biggest angle. And again, if you draw a, a line perpendicular, meaning a 90 degree angle here, it's a good indicator that if you have an obtuse angle, uh, which means you might have an obtuse triangle. So anyways, moving on, classifying triangles by sides, we have the scaling triangle. It says no, no two sides are congruent. And so uh, no two sides are congruent. Congruent means equal. And so I measured these sides earlier using a ruler, and I noticed none of the sides are the same length, so this is an example of a scaling triangle. But oftentimes, they will not actually put uh, the measure on there. Uh, they'll use tick marks. Uh, tick marks is a way to indicate the lengths of sides. For example, I've got one tick mark here, two tick marks here, three tick marks here. Since all of these sides have a different number of tick marks, that means that those sides are not going to be congruent to each other. Therefore, this is a scaling triangle. So this is one tick mark, this is two tick marks. Since these tick marks don't equal each other, that means these sides don't equal each other. So that's one way to indicate if sides are congruent or not. Moving on, we have the isosceles triangle. It says at least two sides are congruent. So at least two sides are congruent. And so I measured the sides here using this ruler, and I got one and three quarters inches, one and three quarters inches, and three inches. Since two of these sides are equal to each other, that means this is going to be an isosceles triangle. And now it says at least two sides. So if this side was also one and three quarters inches, this would technically still be an isosceles triangle. Uh, but you don't always want to do that. There's a better name for a triangle that has all three sides that are congruent. That's on the next slide. So generally, if you have only two sides that are congruent, you want to call that an isosceles triangle. But technically, if all three sides were congruent, then you could call that an isosceles triangle. And I'm going to put tick marks on this triangle here. And since I have two sides here that have the same number of tick marks, that means these two sides are congruent. This is also going to be an isosceles triangle. So just something to keep in mind. Now moving on, we have the equilateral triangle. It says all sides are congruent. Now just like on the equiangular, I can chop this guy in half here. We have equa for equal, lateral for sides. Like a quadrilateral has four sides, lateral means sides. So this is equilateral, equal sides. It says all sides are congruent. And I measured all the sides here, and since every side here measures the same, this is an example of an equilateral triangle. Now if I were to put one tick mark on all these, since these have the same amount of tick marks, this is also going to be an equilateral triangle because I'm indicating that all the sides are equal. It could be two tick marks, and that still means all sides are congruent, so this is technically still going to be an equilateral triangle. Now, something I need to talk about. An equilateral triangle is actually going to be the same thing as an equiangular triangle. They're the same triangle. Equilateral means all sides are congruent, but equiangular Equal angular triangle means all angles are congruent. If you have all sides are congruent in a triangle, then that means the angles opposite of those sides are also going to be congruent to each other. So if you have an equilateral triangle, you also have an equal angular triangle. And likewise, if you have an equal angular triangle, you're going to have an equilateral triangle. If I know all these angles are equal to each other, that means the sides opposite those angles are also going to be congruent, and therefore you have an equilateral triangle. So if you have an equilateral triangle, you also have an equal angular triangle. If you have an equal angular triangle, you should know that all the sides are going to be congruent because it's also an equilateral triangle. Likewise, if you have an equilateral triangle, you should know that all the angles are congruent because this is also going to be an equal angular triangle. Uh, now to kind of wrap all things up, classifying triangles by angles, we have the right triangle, the obtuse triangle, and acute triangle. And the special kind of acute triangle is the equal angular triangle. And if we're classifying by sides, we have the isosceles triangle, scaling triangle, and equilateral triangle. Now keep in mind, these two triangles, the equal angular triangle and equilateral triangle, are going to be uh, going together here. So if you have a triangle uh, that is equal uh, angular, meaning that all the angles are congruent to each other, you also know that all the sides have to be congruent to each other as well. So anyways, hopefully this helps you understand uh, the different kinds of triangles and, and different ways to classify triangles, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.